uh, we celebrate and commemorate Mother's Day with a $354 million package to support mother's health, women's health and the health of our beautiful young babies. Uh, I'm delighted to be uh, joined by uh, Dr Katie Allen, of course a paediatrician in her own right as well as the uh, member for Higgins, uh, Higgins uh, by uh, Christine Morgan, the head of the uh, National uh, Mental Health Commission, uh, by an extraordinary group of leaders in, uh, in women's health here today, uh, by uh, Professor uh, Jeannie Chong from the Royal Women's Hospital, uh, Susan Evan, Evans, Chair of the Pelvic Pain Foundation, Kirsty Mead uh, from the Pelvic Pain Foundation, Janet Mitchellmore from Jean Hales for Women's Health, uh, Kirsten Pilati and Catherine Fagg uh, from the Breast Cancer Network of Australia, uh, uh, Vase, Giovanna Vosca, uh, the CEO of Ranscock, uh, and uh, Dr Jenny Dowd, uh, the uh, Victorian Councillor from Ranscog, um, as well as uh, Professor John Newnham, a former Senior Australian of the Year, uh, the Chair of the Australian uh, Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance, and uh, Greg Hall and the uh, amazing team uh, here at uh, Francis Perry. Uh, so uh, to, to see our doctors, our nurses, our uh, midwives in action is to see the best of Australia. Uh, my mum was a midwife and uh, she would be just thrilled to see these beautiful babies being born and brought into the world and here on Mother's Day uh, and everybody. Uh, is uh, thrilled by the gift of new life. And so today uh, we're announcing a Mother's Day package of women's health support measures. And uh, I'll uh, run through them very briefly and then invite others to speak. Uh, uh, the $354 million starts with support for premature uh, birth and overcoming the challenges and the problems of premature birth. That includes $13.7 million for um, the Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance. And uh, what we know is that uh, premature birth can affect 8% of births around Australia and twice that number in Indigenous Australia. And John Newnham and his team uh, know very well about the impact on development and health uh, and uh, all of the consequences. And there, Trial work is now being expanded around Australia. It's as simple as saving lives and protecting lives for mums and bubs. Um, the uh, additional thing is that there's $19 million for a uh, new PBS listing, uh, ORIPRO, and uh, this will help over 14,000 patients have access to a new medicine uh, which will assist in helping to prevent premature births. It's hard to imagine a more important medicine. In terms of mental health and eating disorders, uh, both for uh, mums and also for uh, uh, particularly young women, but uh, women of all ages, uh, there's a $74 million package. Uh, we know that uh, perinatal mental health uh, can have an enormous toll. In many ways, it's still a hidden condition and we have to help support it but bring it into the light. Um, and so uh, in particular there, uh, what we have is uh, at $47 million for perinatal mental health to help expectant mums uh, and uh, mums who have given birth deal with the challenge, which is natural, uh, which uh, is biological, which comes with all of uh, the great joys of being a new or expectant mum there is a real challenge of perinatal anxiety and depression, and uh, this support will help save lives and improve lives. Equally, um, a real personal, personal passion is eating disorders, and uh, we know that uh, eating disorders can affect up to uh, a million uh, people in Australia, overwhelmingly women, in particular young women, and uh, it has one of the highest mortality rates of any of the mental health conditions. So there's. $27 million uh, to expand and extend support for eating disorders. And um, this has been a hidden condition in Australia and we're helping to bring it into the, the light uh, along with uh, perinatal mental health. Um, related to, to this, of course, is uh, breast and cervical cancer. We lose almost 3,500 women 
a year to these two conditions. We nevertheless have some of the highest survival rates in the world, but uh, there's $110 million to support the fight against breast and cervical cancer um, in Australia. We are on track by 2035 to be potentially the first country in the world to eliminate cervical cancer. The combination of our vaccine, uh, of Gardasil, and now Gardasil 9, uh, of our uh, vaccination program and our screening program, uh, this gives real help uh, for Australia to save lives and protect lives, but also to be a world leader. Um, in addition to that, uh, with regards to breast cancer, which itself takes over 3,000 uh, beautiful women every year, uh, there is $6.6 million to the amazing breast cancer network of, of Australia. You, you do an extraordinary job. Uh, and uh, uh, in particular, we're expanding the breast screen program uh, to, it will now cover ages 40 to, to 74 on a permanent basis. And, this will give better access for more women and uh, more women uh, will have access to mammograms and uh, that often in itself is important. Another critical thing is uh, $21 million for endometriosis and uh, uh, other related women's health conditions. Endometriosis until recently has been largely unspoken of in public life in Australia but uh, again for uh, an extraordinary number of Australian women, it can be a painful, agonising, debilitating condition. And this $21 million of funding, um, in particular to expand the PEP Talk program, uh, which will talk uh, to uh, not just uh, uh, girls and young women in schools, but also to, uh, to uh, boys and young men, to give that education right around Australia, uh, will make a real difference and will hopefully lead to better treatment uh, to better support, to better understanding and to earlier diagnosis. Um, and then uh, uh, finally, uh, there's uh, uh, new MBS listings or Medicare listings of uh, just over uh, $91 million, uh, largely for birth-related treatments. Uh, in particular, earlier access uh, to IVF programs. And uh, these programs, uh, whether it's in terms of uh, pre-implantation genetic screening uh, will help being that more children are born without conditions such as cystic fibrosis and they'll have a better life and a longer life. So uh, these things together mean a very happy Mother's Day. I'm delighted to invite uh, Katie Allen and then Christine Morgan and then, uh, and then others. Thank you. And isn't it wonderful to be here on a, a beautiful Mother's Day at the Francis Perry House? Congratulations to all of those of you here today who've helped uh, bring these sets of announcements to the table because as a government we care, as you do, about the health and well-being not only of all Australians but particularly today on Mother's Day, it's about women's health. And of course, not every woman is a mother, but every woman has a mother. And today on Mother's Day, I think it's wonderful to hear about some particular issues that I'm particularly passionate about, and that is uh, perinatal anxiety and depression. As a paediatrician caring for young mothers and fathers, I know the toll that those early weeks and months of sleeplessness, of anxiety and worry, not knowing what to do necessarily, it's wonderful to know that the federal government, the Morrison government, has the back of young families as they navigate these incredibly difficult early weeks and months. Whether you're a new mum or you've had many children, it's a really tough few weeks and months. And we've heard today from some beautiful young mums with their babies, born today on Mother's Day. Sadie, a beautiful baby born today my, from a constituent in my electorate. And I'm so delighted that the federal government is delivering funding to support a better, a better hotline. So we already have a hotline, but there's been a massive increase during COVID. And I know this because um, maternal health services were under um, lockdown themselves. And so mothers were, were reaching out for helplines. And it was wonderful that we could provide that extra support through the very difficult stages that they were experiencing as young mums through COVID. And the calls to the hotline doubled during COVID in 2020 and they've remained elevated. So mums have found this hotline. It's fantastic that they're using it and there are now increased resources to make sure that that goes on into the future. The other thing we're doing is providing more funding for the Centre of Perinatal Excellence, COPE, to improve national access to perinatal mental health screening. 
Sometimes it can feel so lonely when you're at home with your new baby, everyone's gone uh, back about their normal activities again and the flowers have gone, the flowers are actually wilting um, and people need that help. So it's wonderful that there is now extra funding provided to ensure that perinatal mental health screening uh, is available uh, for Australian mums. And lastly, we need to know what we're doing and how we're doing and how to do it better. So I'm um, delighted that there's extra funding for the Australian Institute of Health Welfare, uh, Health Welfare to develop and manage a perinatal mental health data set because you can't manage what you don't know. So it's important that we measure uh, and manage better to prevent uh, mental health issues as they arise in those really beautiful first few weeks and months after families have had their baby. So I'm delighted with these new announcements today. Thank you, Minister Greg Hunt, for what you're doing. Christine Morgan. Thank you. Thank you and what wonderful news. And I would just like to add my special um, Happy Mother's Day to all mums. Uh, we absolutely wouldn't be here without them, as we all know. Um, and look, it is my real pleasure to be able today to talk uh, for a few minutes towards some new initiatives which are being funded around eating disorders. A um, couple of things I'd like to say about that. Firstly, it is under this government that we saw some very, very significant um, initiatives being introduced for eating disorders. As the minister has said, eating disorders for many years has been seen as a lifestyle choice, and we now know it is not. It is a killer. It kills approximately 650 Australians every year. And that is a harsh reality. It is a very complex neuropsychiatric disorder. One of the things that was introduced by the minister and by the prime minister was a specific MBS number for eating disorders. That has taken us a long way further. But what we're now seeing the government do is to not stop at that, but to actually continue its investment as we continue to seek to improve the lot and actually to make sure that people, if they have an eating disorder, can be made well. So in this area, what are we doing? Firstly, we are in trying to ensure that anybody who works with somebody with an eating disorder is credentialed. We want absolutely top-notch training. So resources are going into making sure that we've got the training, we've got the practice standards, and we've got the, the website which tells us who can do this properly. Second thing, during the uh, COVID, not only did we see an increase in the perinatal side of things, but we actually saw a significant increase in the presentation of eating disorders, not just in community, but in hospital presentations. So another initiative that we're investing in is what we call a brief intervention. We're gonna be training our mental health workers in our community settings. So in our adult mental health centers, in Headspace, in other places, so they can actually know what to do. And they can either give that early intervention for somebody early in episode, or for somebody who's got a longer wait time, we can actually do something effective until they can get into the treatment they need. We're looking to increase community access for treatment. We'll be working with all of the jurisdictions to see if not only in addition to the residentials, which have been a commitment of this government, we can actually also get some daycare centres, some day, daycare centres in as well. We're not forgetting carers. They're a critical part of recovery and treatment for somebody with an eating disorder. So Eating Disorders Families Australia, EDFA, which is a fantastic organisation, has a program called Strive, where they seek to provide mentoring and peer support for carers. That is receiving an additional boost. And then something incredibly special, incredibly special. $13 million is being invested in the National Eating Disorders Research Centre. There is so much that we know now about eating disorders, but still so much that we don't know. And this funding will enable a research centre of excellence to be established for eating disorders. We already have researchers in Australia that, that really hit above their weight internationally. This will make sure that we can do this not only for Australians, but I truly believe it will contribute to what is known on the international scene. So it is a package for eating disorders which looks at how do we understand it better? How do we intervene early? How do we treat it more effectively? And how do we look after carers? So happy Mother's Day to all of those women, mums, daughters, grandmothers, aunt, uh, aunts and others who do have the reality of an eating disorder in their life. This will make a difference. Thank you. And uh, thanks very much, Christine. I'll just invite uh, Kirsten and Susan and John to make some brief words and then we'll open up for questions. Thank you very much, Minister. Kirsten Pilati, CEO of Breast Cancer Network Australia. First, I would like to acknowledge the government on their incredible investment in prevention and early detection of breast cancer. It will certainly help us to pave the way for better outcomes for Australian women and men who are diagnosed. 
But not only that, you've taken the next step forward in supporting Breast Cancer Network Australia to deliver support services so that we can let the hospital system look after the treatment and care of patients, but BCNA can be here to make sure the emotional wellbeing of Australians are looked after. And I'm so proud that this funding will help to build on the community support that we have right around the country and ensure that Breast Cancer Network Australia can take the very best uh, emotional care experts out into regional Australia where we know they are screaming for additional support right now. So Minister, thank you for your ongoing support and for really seeing the importance that breast cancer plays in our community. Great, thank you. Hello, uh, Susan Evans from the Pelvic Pain Foundation of Australia. Today is a great day for girls and women with pain. We know that one in five girls are missing school because of period pain. We know that one in 10 will develop endometriosis in their life, and one in 30 Australian girls are already living with pain every day. Australian women identified schools education as one of their top three priorities when they developed the National Action Plan for Endometriosis. And the Pelvic Pain Foundation, in collaboration with the federal and state governments, is delivering on that priority. Our Periods, Pain and Endometriosis Pep Talk Schools program is coming to schools already in South Australia and Western Australia. We provide a medically trained and medically supported education for girls to help them work out if their pain is normal, what they can do themselves, a healthy, lifestyle-based program and where to go when they need more help. We are reducing the time between diagno to diagnosis of endometriosis. We are helping girls stay at school and live their life to their true potential. And we are working to integrate with the health community to sustainably build that into health services. In South Australia and Western Australia, the Pep Talk Schools program is already available and 100% of schools that we visited want us to come back. So, so we're happy that the community needs and wants us. So uh, we're looking forward to collaborating with any state that wants to work with the federal government and with us to match funding and bring Pep Talk to their state for the betterment of their young Australians. To Minister Hunt, to the parliamentary friends of Endometriosis Group, particularly the Honourable, uh, the, um, uh, Honourable Nicole Flint and Lisa Chesters, and to all the countless women in Australia who've worked hard to make this day happen. Thank you, and thank you, and happy Mother's Day. Great. And John? Uh, good morning, everybody, and happy Mother's Day. Minister, I'd like to thank you very much on behalf of the Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance for this fantastic support. It is very important and we will spend every dollar with great care. Preterm birth is the single greatest cause of death in young children in our society and all similar societies. It is also one of the major causes of lifelong disability.